Hi, I'm Stan Cohen, and I am a pediatric gastroenterologist at the Children's Center for Digestive Healthcare in Atlanta. And I'm also the CEO and co-founder, as well as the director of the Medical Advisory Board for Nutrition for Kids. I'm here today to talk to you about the children who are wheelchair bound or bed bound and who often have developmental disabilities. It's difficult sometimes to provide them adequate nutrition because their developmental disabilities and issues that constrain them to their wheelchairs or beds in the first place often interfere with their ability to eat with the normal patterns that we do at mealtimes where they're feeding themselves. When they can't feed themselves, they obviously either need a caretaker to do so, or when that's not possible because they have difficulty swallowing, chewing, or having food go down into their lungs in a way that we call aspiration, what happens is we need to be able to provide the nutrition to them in a safe manner so that we do not continually have the problem of pneumonia or other risks for respiratory illnesses. What we do is we calculate out how much they need and then give them what they need through a gastrostomy tube. These children often require much of their feedings that way. Now it's great if they can eat some of their meal, but when they can't, we can replace that with gastrostomy feedings. With those feedings, we're able to give them the nutrition that they need. The feedings that we put into the tubes can either be a home brew where we use a puree and mixture of both uh, liquid and solids so that they're getting basically the same nutrition that they would by eating or where we use a formula that has been defined and made usually to provide adequate nutrition with uh, the amount of protein, calories, and other nutrients that they require. This can be a different relationships to the amount of calories to nutrients based on their actual and specific needs. For the child who is getting too many calories, we can use a lower calorie formula that still has all the nutrients. And for the child who is not gaining enough weight, we can actually increase that density of the calories so that those are maximized and go along again with all the nutrients that they need. This is carefully calculated out by either a physician or dietitian or in combination of the two. Once that's done, it can be then delivered through a gastrostomy tube or through what's called a GJ tube when it has to bypass the stomach and go directly into the intestine. There are concerns when we use gastrostomies for feeding. Usually they are about the infections that can come around the tube, but that can be handled by keeping it clean. There are concerns about the amount of formula that's, that's given. When a child is given too much formula at once, or given a formula that doesn't quite fit his or her needs, that can cause the child to have what's called dumping, where it quickly goes into the intestinal tract and causes diarrhea, bloating, and gas. Additionally, we can have reflux that comes on when a child is given too much formula at once, or if there are problems with the lower esophageal sphincter, that valve between the stomach and the esophagus, so that things come back from the stomach and into the lungs, particularly if the child is not properly positioned. It's very important to recognize that malnutrition is a real risk for these children. They may not get all the nutrients they want Otherwise, if we try to just sustain them with their oral feedings alone, it can be a real challenge for a parent or a caregiver to sit there for a long period of time while that child is unable to eat or refuses to eat. Sometimes that becomes even more of a challenge if the child has difficulty swallowing. So as we provide this nutrition, we're able to prevent the, the issues of malnutrition 
that can otherwise exist. We still want these children to gain and grow, to be healthy children as much as is possible for them. We want them to be able to participate in life in the best way possible and for you as their parents and caregivers to be able to feel that you're satisfying all of their needs and satisfying your own needs in taking care of that child in a very loving, kind, and effective way.